Hey guys, just a quick note before the show starts. We had some audio trouble this week, so you'll notice that Randy's voice sounds a little wrong. <laughs> We're very sorry about that. Turns out that recording podcasts in your new basement apartment is a little different, and here we are learning the hard way. Hopefully it's not too distracting, and you can still enjoy the conversation we had this week. I think it's a good one. So, without further ado, here's the show. Hey guys, and welcome back to Freckles and Blondie, the podcast where we get way too involved in discussions about loss. <laughs> I'm Randy. I'm Tiffany. And today we'll be discussing episode 22 of the first season, Born to Run. This episode originally aired on May 11th, 2005. It was directed by Tucker Gates, who previously directed In Translation and Confidence Man. It was written by Javier Grillo Markswatch. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> Always proud when you nail that name. Yeah, it's a hard one. <laughs> he previously wrote and co-wrote House of the Rising Sun, All the Best Cowboys Have Daddy Issues, Hearts and Minds, and In Translation. He's done a lot for season one. Yeah, he's, I feel like he's been one of our most frequent writers. Yeah, definitely. And pretty good episodes, too. Yeah, he does good work. I like him. So, what did you think of this episode? Um, I thought it was kind of middle of the road, just pretty good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Didn't, like, wow me, and I didn't hate it. I was just kind of in between, like, this was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> It felt a little like filler before we get to our finale. Yeah, like setting certain things up and stuff. Yeah, like the story as it's happening is not super duper gripping, <laughs> yeah. but there are scenes that are wonderful, and overall I like it. What about you? I was surprised. I didn't remember this episode too well before I rewatched it, but I thought it was really good. It was really interesting. Like, I feel like at this point in the first season, so many complicated things have happened. Especially when a couple of weeks ago we did Jack's third episode and this is Kate's third episode. So there's just lots of interesting layers and character development going on throughout the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So I liked it. I thought it was written really well. Yeah. It's nice to see Kate in a less criminal, you know, perspective. Yeah. Since we've seen her on the run and, you know, Robin Banks. <laughs> so it's nice to see her go mm -hmm. home and kind of see where she came from and who she spent time with. Yeah. And to finally get the answer to the question, you know, when she said in her last flashback episode to Jack, it belonged to the man I loved, it belonged to the man I killed, it's nice to kind of get that whole story. Yeah, it's good to clarify that. <laughs> yeah. Especially when we're dealing with this whole, like, did she poison Michael, did she not issue, and yeah, it's definitely good to see that you didn't, like, axe the guy you loved, you know, you made a mistake. Right. It's a little different. Important distinction there, <laughs> Kate. <laughs> okay, should we get into it? Let's do it. Alrighty. No previously on this week. What? That's so weird. <laughs> I know, it is so weird. It threw Since me when? off. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we just know things now. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, lost. You don't need any ketchup. You know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we open on a car pulling into a motel parking lot. A woman with blonde hair gets out and changes the license plate of the car. 
She walks into a recently vacated room to take a shower and dye her hair brown, and we find out that it's Kate. In the next scene, Kate tells the man at the front desk that she's expecting a letter for a Joan Hart. The guy hands it over, and Kate reads the letter in her car as she cries. She is one crafty girl. (laughs) Yeah, she is. You can tell just in the scene, like, how long she has been running. She's been doing this for a long time. Like, she has so many license plates in her trunk. She steals that towel from the maid and just walks in and takes a shower. Like, she's done this a thousand times before. Yeah, it's, like, definite routine for her. They don't belittle you by having to say, well, I've been on the run for eight years now. You know, like, they don't (laughs) make it so obvious, but... It's obvious if you're just paying attention. Yeah, exactly. Also, this is super random. Doesn't have anything to do with anything. But did you ever watch the show Sabrina and the Teenage Witch when you were growing up? Yes. Okay. So when I was reading trivia about this episode. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) So when she um, gives the name Joan Hart to the guy at the front desk. That's a reference to Melissa Joan Hart, the actress who played Sabrina in Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And then the actress who plays Kate's mom in this episode, her name is Beth Broderick, she played Aunt Zelda in that show. As soon as you said that, (laughs) I remembered and it clicked. I had this light bulb moment. That is so weird. (laughs) Isn't it? I just thought that was kind of cool because I used to love that show. (laughs) I know. Wow. What a flashback. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I bet a lot of people have no idea what that show even is. <laughs> yeah, probably not. If you didn't grow up in the 90s, you probably right. don't have any idea what we're talking about. But 90s kids right now are yeah. like, woo! <laughs> exactly. It was a good show. <laughs> it was. It was bewitched for our generation. <laughs> it was! <laughs> so anyway, I thought that yeah, was kind of cool. That's but. really fun. On the island, Kate is sitting on the beach, staring at the model airplane we saw in her last flashback episode. Charlie comes over, strumming his guitar, and as charming as ever. He says that sales for Drive Shaft's album must have tripled since his tragic death, and he can't wait to be rescued so he can enjoy the fame and money. When Kate asks if he thinks the raft will work, he says of course it will. Because the raft is massive. Yeah, I like Charlie in this episode. Yeah, I do too. And he's right. Like, he probably is making a fortune right now during his death. Yeah. (laughs) It would make a great story for any rock artist. It would. Over by the raft, an argument is unfolding. High school science teacher Ars is telling everyone that apparently they're in the midst of monsoon season. This means the trade winds are going to blow south. Since the only thing south of the island is Antarctica, this is not good for their prospects of getting rescued. And Ars says the raft needed to leave yesterday. So, hello, Ars. Yes, this is our introduction to Ars. (laughs) Welcome to the island. It's nice to meet you. Right. He's immediately kind of annoying to me. (laughs) Yeah, I'm thinking that... They should just take whatever boat he took to get here and use that to get off the island because he has not been here (laughs) until now. Oh, that's such a good idea. (laughs) Yeah, and he strikes me as a character who kind of needs to be involved in every decision that goes on. Right? He's very, like, loud and kind of just into it all of a sudden. Yeah. And you're like, where have you been? Exactly. You had all these opinions on the raft. Maybe you should have told us this. Weeks ago when we started making a raft. Exactly. Or even making the first raft. Like, where were you then? (laughs) Exactly. Okay, (laughs) Arts. Yeah, it's not not looking good for the raft team, I guess. I would never get on this raft personally. Me either. (laughs) Really? Okay. No, I'm (laughs) anti-raft. Yeah, same. (laughs) There's a lot of scary stuff going on here, but... The ocean is terrifying. Yes. Like being stranded in the middle of the ocean, I can't think of anything scarier. Right. And I feel like we've talked about this, but the ocean at night is the most terrifying thing yeah, ever. Yeah, for sure. Like, you have limited supplies on the raft. Yeah. I just, no, definitely not. <laughs> How are you going to get water? Like, you can't drink the salt water. It's, no. 
I would climb into that plane, Boone climbed him too, before I did this. (laughs) (laughs) That seems like a better idea. (laughs) Wow, that's a strong statement. (laughs) That would be a hard choice. I don't know what I would do. (laughs) Kate catches Michael alone and asks him if he believes the weather report from Arst. Michael isn't sure, but he doesn't want to take any chances. He's going to leave as soon as possible. When he asks Kate why she's suddenly so interested, she says with a determined look on her face, I'm going with you. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, exactly. It's like, after she says that, you know things are about to get dramatic. Mm-hmm. Like, you know Sawyer's going to lose it when he finds out. You can tell Kate means business here. Yeah, she's not messing around. <laughs> Mm-mm. Not a girl who messes around, really. Nope. <laughs> Coming back from the title scene, Kate questions Michael's choice to bring Sawyer on the raft's team of four. Michael says Sawyer bought his way on since they needed the stuff he had for building. Kate tells Michael that Sawyer doesn't even know how to sail and says she spent two summers sailing. Michael doesn't give, saying a deal's a deal. Kate then questions whether it's the best idea to take Walt on the raft but Michael very firmly informs her that the best thing for Walt right now is to get the hell off the island. So Kate is just so talented, isn't she? She can track anything. (laughs) She can (laughs) sail. (laughs) Yeah, it's very convenient, isn't it? (laughs) We've just like conveniently given Kate a bunch of skills that make her relevant to pretty much every situation. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like she grew up in the forest from ages like four to 20 and just like lived off the land (laughs) right i mean i guess to be fair like she did live on the run for a long time she probably did pick up a bunch of skills doing that but it seems like these are all skills from her life before that so i don't know i just find that really funny yeah (laughs) but it's good it's good like overall in the big picture it's good to give kate reasons to be involved in a lot of the stuff that she gets involved with. Yeah, to give her agency, too, to yeah, kind of know exactly. what she's doing. Right. She's not damsel in distress girl, and I like that. Yeah. But I am totally on board with what she is saying here about Walt should not be on that raft, because Walt should not be on that raft. <laughs> yeah, I mean... That is Michael's own selfish desire, if you ask me. Yeah, I feel like it shows how desperate she is when she tries to bargain... For Walt's spot? I don't know. Just like, like Michael would never just leave Walt behind on the island. But maybe, I mean, maybe she's thinking that they would both stay behind. I mean, I think ideally that's what should happen. I think Michael and Walt should stay behind. I think it's great that he built this raft, but there are other people willing to man it. You should let them do it because it's dangerous and something could happen to you or your kid. Yeah. He says later that it could be really hard to find the island later. Yeah, that was so messed up. Can't but, wait. like, what? <laughs> yeah. You don't know that. You, all you know is that, like, planes haven't come. Maybe they just assumed everybody was dead and that the plane crashed in the middle of the ocean, you know? So, I don't know. It's just a weird thing for him to say. Yeah, I, f- I feel like that's an indication of how selfish Michael can be. Like, we're starting to see these little cracks, if you ask me. Yeah, definitely. I think in a way, like, he th- he thinks he's doing the best thing for Walt. Like, the best thing for him is to get off this island. And you're like, yeah, but, like, <laughs> I think there are other ways to do this. Like, send out some other people and keep Walt safe in the meantime. Right. People who have more experience with sailing, maybe. <laughs> right. Like, Kate. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just give her your spy. We could end all this right now. Yeah. Tell her to bring a friend. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's determined, so I guess you gotta give him credit for that. Yeah, I guess. I feel like it's, you know, it's my raft, so I want to go. Yeah, I feel like maybe he would have changed his mind if the first one hadn't burned to the ground. But now that this is the second raft that he's spent all this time building, he's like, there's no way I'm not going to be on this raft. Yeah. I wonder if Walt asked him to stay, like, what he would do. Mm. 
It's a good question. We'll almost get that exact scenario later in the episode, though. Yeah, we will. In a flashback, Kate is pretending to deliver flowers in a hospital. She gets directions for Diane Jansen's room and makes a point to avoid eye contact with the police officer sitting in the hallway. In a parking garage, a doctor named Tom gets into his car, only to find Kate sitting in the back seat. He calls her Katie and asks what she's doing here. She says Diane is dying of cancer, and she thought she ought to come see her one last time. She then says that she needs Tom's help. I feel like Tom is instantly very likable. Yeah, I think so too. I like him. Despite the fact that he is a doctor. (laughs) (laughs) She clearly has a thing for doctors. Oh my god, I didn't even make that connection, but it's so true. (laughs) Isn't that funny? Maybe I have a thing for doctors, too. (laughs) Maybe you do. (laughs) Oh, I love that. (laughs) But yeah, he is very likable and... I automatically trust him. Yeah, me too. And, you know, in comparison to Kate, that's a huge thing. Mm -hmm. I feel like they have very different vibes from each other, but yeah, I like him a lot. On the beach, Jin is working on the raft when Sun walks over. In Korean, she asks Jin if he's planning on going with the raft. He hesitates, but tells her yes, and she walks away. Uh, they can break your heart in, like, ten words. They really can. <laughs> oh, they are so good. <laughs> they are. They do so much with so little. Yeah. Saeed is leading Jack through the jungle. Jack doesn't know what this is about and is about to turn around when Locke walks out. He says he wants Jack to keep an open mind and leads them both to the hatch that he's been keeping secret for weeks. Locke tells Jack that it's time they had a discussion. Jack is so petulant here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not really. He's like, what's going on, Saeed? And Saeed's like, it's better if you see for yourself. No, it's not better if I see it for myself. Tell me where we're going or I'm turning around. Like, <laughs> just like, what? Calm Look, down. <laughs> the track record of people leading other people through the jungle to it's things Saeed. they don't know. I mean, true, but. Just calm. Just calm it. Calm down. <laughs> I feel like Jack's a lot calmer in this episode than he has been previously. So He is. He is overall. <laughs> I mean, it would be hard for him to not be calmer than he has been. He's been really worked up lately. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I feel like Locke never wanted to tell Jack anything about this hatch. And I'm just assuming as soon as Saeed found out about it, he immediately went to get Jack. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who's the source of this, really. I feel like they would have come to kind of a mutual decision, like, that it was something they needed to do. If one of them had pressured the other into it, I feel like we would have seen it. Yeah, maybe. But here we are. (laughs) Indeed. Michael is hurrying to get the raft ready when Sawyer walks over. He asks him why Jin is packing fish for their journey. He's not sure why they can't just fish when they're on the ocean. Michael looks annoyed asking if Sawyer knows anything about ocean survival or sailing. Sawyer asks Michael what he knows about that, but Michael thinks that maybe Sawyer is the wrong guy to take on the raft. Sawyer responds by asking who's going to take his place. I am sympathetic to Sawyer here. This is so lame. (laughs) (laughs) I would be so mad. Like, okay, you're going to back out on me now after I've been helping you build the raft? Thanks. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's not great, but he did buy his way on, so... Yeah, with, by giving Michael things, like... That he was hoarding. <laughs> Michael made a deal, and now he's like, mm, I changed my mind. Like, that's just annoying. What a cop-out. Yeah, I can kind of see that. I do like when Sawyer asks Michael, like, what do you know about ocean survival or sailing? And right. Michael very <laughs> conveniently chooses not to answer that question. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, sorry, I didn't know prerequisite knowledge was part of the deal. Exactly. If you'd given me a quiz before we got on, maybe this would be different. Oh. 
thank God Jin's going with them. Because without Jin, <laughs> where would they be? <laughs> true. <laughs> Very true. We cut to Kate, who's burning the photo off what looks like a passport. Sawyer approaches, asking what the hell she thinks she's doing. He knows she wants his spot on the raft. Kate gets up, saying Michael must have misunderstood her. But Sawyer grabs her. He says he knows exactly what she's doing, and that she was the prisoner the U.S. Marshal was escorting on the plane. That's why she wanted the Halliburton case so bad. He guesses that this is her only chance to get free, getting picked up on a passing ship. Sawyer says he'll keep her secret, but she's not getting his spot. Kate informs him that if she wants his spot, she'll get his spot. With authority. Mm, So much authority. (laughs) I kind of love it. (laughs) I love this whole scene. They're so great. I just love them so much. Do you? Do you really? (laughs) Yeah, Randy, I really do. (laughs) I love them, like, I love them when they're a team, but I love them when they're in conflict, too, because they're just so evenly matched that it's just a really compelling dynamic. Yeah, it is interesting. It reminds me a lot of um, the episode, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Like, Sawyer has something that Kate desperately wants and she's going to do anything to get it right and they know each other so well is Sawyer the only person who wasn't told that Kate was the prisoner he just figured it out I feel like he is Mm, yeah I think so their read on each other is so accurate and I just really enjoy it yeah I have a problem I feel like Sawyer grabs her a lot in this episode and I don't like that at mm. all. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I can see that. Like, it's too... It's too intimidating. Yeah, it's so unnecessary. It's like he's using his strength against her. Like, the fact that he's a man, and she's not, and she's... He's obviously stronger than she is. Mm, and I yeah. feel like that dynamic has been in their relationship in the past. You know, they've punched each other, I don't know, or she's punched him, I don't know how many times when they've been... <laughs> rolling around he's grabbed her like i just You're right they're very physical with each yeah, other but it's like i don't like it and i feel like especially in this episode he grabs her more than once and it makes me i just don't like it <laughs> yeah i can see that for sure that makes a lot of sense i guess i look at that and it doesn't bother me because i feel like they're they're just reading capability off of each other you know like <laughs> let's continue the Buffy crossover. You know how, like, Spike will always punch Buffy in the face and it's fine? Like, <laughs> because they see each other as equals and they just yeah. don't care. They will beat the crap out of each other. Yeah. I kind of see it a little like that, but not exactly. <laughs> it's not exactly the same because you're right. Like, these, first of all, these are not superheroes. Right. And, like, Sawyer does have a physical power over Kate so it's a little it's a little harder to reconcile yeah but you're right like she does like she punches him and it's not like it's totally one way but yeah he definitely comes across kind of domineering sometimes yeah I'm not a fan but that's an interesting comparison with Spike and Buffy because with them I feel like it's a sign of respect you know and I feel like as much as Sawyer and Kate are clashing here, like, they do respect each other, and they respect each other's capability. Like, he believes her. She is going to do whatever it takes to get that spot. And she she is. <laughs> yeah, I guess I find it hard. I've always found it hard to read the respect between the two of them. Because even by the end of this episode, when they have that conversation, and she tells him to be safe... I'm like, no, you should punch him. Like, he grabbed you and outed you in front of everyone, and you're just fine with it? Like, Because it's exactly what she would have done if she were in that situation. She gets it. I don't know how to describe it. It's hard for me to see the respect between the two of them. It's always been hard for me, but... Because you don't respect them for these actions. Is that why? Right. I just don't respect Sawyer for his actions, mostly. <laughs> Well, do you respect Kate when she does something bad? Like, she does bad stuff in this episode. Yeah. Such a complicated question. (laughs) (laughs) But she doesn't lose your respect. No. 
She's not physical as as physical as Sawyer. She doesn't grab people. I don't like it, okay? I don't like it. I don't, <laughs> don't like, like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the deep insight everyone comes here for, right? I don't like it. Moving on. <laughs> Ew, it's gross. Yeah. <laughs> At the raft, Michael asks Walt to grab him some water. He drinks while Walt asks him what Sawyer's problem was. Walt adorably asks Michael if they'll come back for everyone else once they get rescued, and Michael gives kind of a non-answer, saying of course they'll look, but the island will be hard to find again, and there aren't any guarantees. Suddenly, Michael grabs his stomach, looking very ill. He tells Walt to get Jack. Um, you better come back here, Michael. Yeah, <laughs> like, I feel like in this scene... He could clearly care less what happens to the the rest of the 40-odd people on this island. Like, as soon as he gets on that raft, it's like, bye, see you never. (laughs) Thanks for the help, guys. I'm out. (laughs) Exactly. It's kind of awful. Like, you've spent almost two months with these people. Yeah. (laughs) It sounds really bad, and I feel like it's in the episode just to justify why he doesn't let somebody else go on the raft instead. Like, that's the only possible reason he could be saying this i think because <laughs> it's just crazy yeah it's it's not great for michael that's for yeah. sure <laughs> it's really unfortunate yeah it is coming back walt is running for help he comes across son and kate and tells them his dad is sick son looks upset she agrees to go with walt back to michael while kate runs to find jack Jack is still at the hatch with Saeed and Locke. Locke says he's known about the hatch for three weeks. Jack is not happy, saying that Locke lied, but Locke points out that he doesn't report to Jack. He says he used his best discretion, just like Jack did when he found the case full of guns. When Jack asks how they're going to open it, Saeed is dismayed. He brought Jack out here to talk Locke out of this nonsense. Jack seems to think the hatch is either filled with supplies or completely empty, but Saeed points out that it has no handle. Maybe it was never meant to be opened from the outside. As the three of them are walking back through the jungle, Kate finds them and tells Jack that something's wrong with Michael. I feel like I've said this before, but I'm 100% with Saeed. They need to stay (laughs) as far away from that hatch as humanly possible. Yeah, I'm Team Lock all the way. I know. <laughs> Let's bust this puppy open. <laughs> and I'm with him with everything he's saying to Jack here. Where he's like, I don't report to you. I don't owe you an explanation for everything I do on this island. He's right. And he's kind of articulating some of the frustration I had last episode with all the attacks against Lock. Not everybody is open and honest about 100% of everything they do on this island including Jack. Like, he didn't tell anyone about the guns because, you know, he had his reasons and Locke had his reasons for this. So I feel like they should be on even playing ground at this point. Who, Jack and Locke? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like they are. And I wouldn't disagree with what Locke's saying, but I feel like Jack also makes a good point that he did lie about it for weeks and weeks. But didn't he, like lie about the gun cases? Yeah, he said he used his best discretion. I mean, that's a totally different... The gun case is a totally different situation from Locke going out here with Boone for three weeks, Boone getting injured while they're out doing stuff, him coming back with Boone and then disappearing for 24 hours. And then, I mean, was who knows if he was ever going to tell anyone about the hatch? The only reason Jack's even here is because... Saeed found out, knew that Locke was lying and made him go and show him the hatch. But who cares? It's not his obligation to tell anyone about anything he finds in the jungle. Boone did not get hurt trying to get into the hatch. They were looking for the plane that's not related to the hatch. Right, but the fact that Locke left for 24 hours and clearly put whatever relationship he has with the hatch or what happened to Boone and then came back and lied to everyone about it again, I mean... This is all the same arguments we were having I last know. week. We but... don't need to rehash last week again. Yeah. I just, I feel like he makes really good points here and it's, he's articulating what I, what I felt last week. Yeah. So I think he's making good points too, but I also think Jack is making a good point as well that he lied about it. And I personally <laughs> still have a problem with that, but yeah, 
But yeah, I mean, I don't feel like either one of them is more right in this moment. I think they mm-hmm. kind of are, they kind of are on even playing ground right now. At least how I see it. I had this like weird thought. So <laughs> we've got like Locke, Saeed, and Jack. And I feel like they are the three most leadery people we have on this island. Mm-hmm. So I feel like we have Saeed, who is clearly like the logical, rational one. We have Locke, who he is like faith incarnate and like the heart. And you have Jack, who is like action and body. I was thinking like a heart, mind, and body thing. Okay. And I feel like they're just this trifecta of like all the different ways that you could think about this and think about the hatch and like, do we even do this? Do we get into it? Or how do we get into it? Should we, you know? So I feel like they're like the three most interesting people to be having this conversation. Yeah, that's an interesting comparison. I hadn't thought about it that way. Because Saeed, like, he's so logical about this. He's like, why would we even need to get in here? You know, like, there's no reason to get in, and there is a possibility there could be something bad. So we just probably shouldn't bother, because things are pretty fine as they are. Locke has this great faith, you know, obviously he wants to get in, and believes in the island and his whole purpose for being here blah 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 Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and jack is always just mr action like he just wants to do 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 and so he sees it and he's like all right let's figure out how to do this like he just sees a problem that needs to be solved yeah it's like neither of them see the potential for anything bad except for saeed right i don't know why that popped into my head in this scene but i like that that was really funny i've been reading a lot of Harry Potter and thinking about trifectas lately. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) But yeah, it makes me wish we had more scenes between the three of them. They're, they're all very intelligent, I feel like, but in different ways. So yes, definitely. It's fascinating. Still think they should listen to Saeed, but (laughs) (laughs) Randy is team, not Jack for once. Crazy. No. (laughs) I don't really understand why Jack wants to open it either. I kind of thought he would say the opposite, but I guess it makes sense. Maybe he's just seeing possibility here. Yeah. Because that's kind of how I've always looked at it. It's like, at the very least, it could be a really sweet shelter. I feel like there's just so much more likelihood that it could be something bad. Like, they're not (laughs) on a normal desert island. The track record so far of just the finding things of just things happening to them here has not been great. So <laughs> no. just leave it alone. <laughs> At the beach, Jack asks Michael what he ate and drank that day. He replies, just the normal stuff, water from the caves like every day. Jack tells them to lie down, but Michael insists that they need to launch the raft tomorrow. As Jack walks away, Kate also insists that he lay down looking concerned. In a flashback, Kate is in Tom's kitchen while he's on the phone. He's asking someone in radiology for a favor. He hangs up and tells her that Diane is scheduled for an MRI in three hours. We learn that Tom is married to Rachel, and he has a son. Rachel is out of town for the weekend. Kate asks Tom if he thinks it's still there. When he reminds her that it's the middle of the night, she tells him they might not get another chance. They drive to a huge tree, get some shovels, and start digging. I love how he hangs up the phone and he's like, well, we got three hours to kill. And then she's like, hey, let's go do this thing. And he's like, it's the middle of the night, Kate. (laughs) (laughs) You just said you had three hours to kill. Jesus. What did you want to do? Play boggle? That's so true. (laughs) (laughs) And that shot of the tree is gorgeous. Yes, I love that tree. It is beautifully shot. I was just like, wow. I would hang a picture of that over my bed. (laughs) Yeah. It's like really eerie but beautiful at the same time. Yeah. But yeah. You can tell in this scene that they clearly have some kind of intense history. Yeah. I feel like you can kind of pick up on their romantic connection right away. Yeah. And at the same time, like, it feels very pure because 
you know, Kate looks at the pictures of his wife and his son, and she just, she seems genuinely happy for him, not bitter, just supportive. Yeah. God, the ending of this is awful. (laughs) (laughs) Way to be a downer, Randy. I know, but it's just like, (laughs) Jesus. Yeah. Anyway. (laughs) Yeah, it's nice right now. She does seem supportive. (laughs) It's nice right now, but things are going to get terrible. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Locke asks Jack what he thinks caused Michael's illness. Jack rules out the food, saying Michael and Jin are on the same diet, and Jin is fine. He pulls out some empty water bottles from a cooler and finds one with some white residue on the bottom. Jack says he thinks someone put something in Michael's water. Pretty good guess there, Jack. Mm, Yep. (laughs) Judging by all that white stuff in the water, I would say you're correct. (laughs) On the beach, Jack checks on Michael. Locke is in the background talking to Hurley. And when Michael asks if they've stopped fighting, Jack shakes his head no. Michael goes to take a drink of water, but Jack gives him a different bottle. He asks if someone did this to him, and Jack says he's not sure but Michael immediately suspects Sawyer. Oh, God. (laughs) Something bad happened. It was probably Sawyer. (laughs) Look, you can't be an asshole 100% of the time. No, (laughs) no, he just has not been an asshole 100% of the time. We can't say this anymore. All right, 95% of the time. (laughs) He's taking care of the baby now. I mean, he's been doing his part lately, okay? (laughs) please. I mean, yeah, it's marginally better, but still... (laughs) been helping build the raft i mean it just honestly doesn't make much sense for sawyer to do that it really doesn't it's just kind of a crazy thing to say considering the conversation they had earlier i can kind of understand why michael would suspect that but yeah i mean it makes sense to me i don't know maybe it's because i just don't like sawyer (laughs) (laughs) well i think that's the way michael feels too he just doesn't like sawyer so it's easy to throw him under the bus it happens to Sawyer all the time. Yeah, and he <laughs> deserves it most of the time, so... <laughs> Whatever, arguable. <laughs> oh, God. Jack approaches Locke and Hurley. He says Michael thinks Sawyer poisoned him. Hurley asks if it's because of Kate. He tells them Kate wants Sawyer's spot on the raft, and also she's a fugitive. Locke didn't know anything about this, and Hurley is getting really frustrated keeping track of all the secrets on the island. <laughs> Locke asks Jack what she did, and Jack suggests that Locke ask her. He repeats what Locke said earlier, telling him he used his best discretion. Jack is so savage here when he throws that line back at Locke. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you... You're defending yourself because he caught you in another lie. <laughs> like... I don't know what you think you're winning here. (laughs) I mean, I guess. All he's doing is proving the point that everyone has their secrets. That's just the way it is. Right, which, I mean, of course that's true, but this is kind of different. Like, it's not Jack's secret to tell, necessarily. True, it's not Jack's secret to tell. That's definitely true. But I just, like, why would you throw that in Locke's face? Like, he's just standing here learning new information. (laughs) Hurley is so funny in this scene, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. He is he is the audience right now where we're like, who wait, who knows what? Did mm-hmm. wait, Locke didn't know that? <laughs> Good old Hurley. He's so vital to this whole group. He's just such a breath of fresh air. Yeah, he really is. Claire is attempting to cut Charlie's hair while he serenades her and the baby with his guitar. Charlie asks her what's the first thing she'll do when they get rescued, and offers to let her and the baby or Turnip Head, as Charlie is calling him, stay with him until they get things figured out. Ugh, this is so sweet. I love them. (laughs) Turnip Head is such a terrible name. (laughs) (laughs) No! But it's like, of course that's what what Charlie would pick to call her. Or the baby. Uh, I also love that he's just writing the soundtrack to Lost. (laughs) I know! (laughs) He's like, oh, here's the one about the polar bear. (laughs) Yeah, I wish I could have heard that finished album. I would have bought that CD. great. Yeah. (laughs) They should have released an album because everyone would have bought it. Oh, for sure. Or any Drive Shaft album. People would have bought that too. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't. I know. If Lost had come out today, they definitely would have. Yeah. 
That's so true. They would have done it immediately. (laughs) At the caves, Kate approaches Jack and asks if Michael's going to be okay. When she follows that question up by asking if someone will replace Michael on the raft, Jack wants to know if she poisoned Michael. She looks hurt and says, do you really think I'm capable of that? Jack responds that he doesn't know what she's capable of, and she walks away. Mm, Lying so easily. I know. These two. (laughs) I think it's weird she's even asking Jack for the spot on the raft. They're not really his spots to give. I mean, that's true. I guess since he's the leader, she's trying to see what he knows, but... I guess it's just an excuse to give Jack and Kate a scene together or something. Because there's no reason for her to ask. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess she initially asked if Michael's going to be okay. But I just, I wish they trusted each other more. But I mean, I also can't really blame Jack for being suspicious here. Yeah, no, you can't, can't trust her because she's not trustworthy. Yeah. She's lying right now and she lies all the time. Yeah, and she never flat out says she didn't poison Michael. Like, just the whole thing. Like, just be honest with each other for three minutes, just one time. (laughs) I love them, but sometimes they make me crazy. (laughs) Yeah. Scenes like this, I'm like, I don't even know why you guys are kind of a couple-ish thing. I don't really get it in a scene like this. Yeah. Because I don't see why Jack has any interest in her, you know? (laughs) Why would you say that? Because she, like, lies all the time? Yeah, because he clearly has a really bad opinion of her, and, you know, rightfully so. Like, she's lied to him many times already, and she's lying to him now. So, it's just kind of weird that he still seems attracted to her. They have this undeniable connection that started when they first met each other. Like I said, that was it for me. (laughs) No matter (laughs) what happened, they were going to be together no matter what. But... It's a very messed up relationship. I mean, no more messed up than Sawyer and Kate, but okay. (laughs) Oh, theirs is messed up too. (laughs) God, we're going to have so many conversations about the three of them. I'm not excited. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, you're not excited? What? (laughs) I mean, some things I am and then some things I'm really not looking forward to discussing. I have a mental picture of what you are not looking forward to discussing. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I can't wait. It's going to be great. I'm going to like <laughs> throw myself out the window when we get to that episode. <laughs> it's going to be delicious. Shut up, okay? <laughs> Stop it. I'm having flashbacks to college right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, let me rein it in. <laughs> <laughs> let me go get my life-size Sawyer poster. Oh, please don't. <laughs> Back at the very large tree... Kate and Tom are still digging. Tom brings out some beer, and he tells Kate that it's not fair, her coming back home. They finally find what they're looking for. An old rusty box. They open it and find a time capsule they buried when they were kids. There are a handful of objects inside, including Tom's plane, the same one Kate was so desperate to find in her last episode. They pull out an old cassette tape and listen to it in the car. It's a recording of the two of them from 1989, talking about the future. Tom thought they'd be married, but all Kate wanted to do was run away. Tom says it's funny how things turn out, and they kiss. Kate apologizes, and Tom says that they'd better get back to the hospital. So, this is kind of messed up. Yeah. I don't even have that much problem with it, honestly. (laughs) Really? Tell me why you do. (laughs) I guess it's obvious why you do, though. (laughs) I mean, like we found out before, Tom's married and has, like, a two-year-old. And all it takes is a couple of hours with Kate and they're making out in his car. Like, I know they have a history, but... (laughs) Jeez. I guess it kind of feels innocent to me, in a weird way. Uh Uh-huh. I mean... It's hard to say because, you know, like, if if that was my husband, I would definitely be mad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I just see two old friends kind of reconnecting in a what should have been kind of way. And it's just kind of like a sad kiss and it's not going to lead to anything. It's just kind of 
this is who we were and something messed that up that we don't really know yet what that was but we know Kate left and it's just just kind of sad yeah I mean I think I think it's clear they still have feelings for each other yeah it just makes me think that like when Tom got married in the back of his mind he was always thinking about Kate and like maybe knowing he'd never Mm -hmm. really be happy with anyone else but then knowing that they can never be together yeah it could be like that I kind of read it like she's just his first love that he's never going to forget. And they're just such close friends, like, all their lives that, you know, they still, they're always going to have something. So that's just kind of what I pulled from it. But it is wrong. Like, it obviously should not be happening. Yeah. I mean. I guess I just can't judge them too much. Like, it just feels like just this momentary thing. Like, they wouldn't have actually done anything more than this. I don't know. I hope not. (laughs) I don't know. I think he might have. He might have gone with her. Because at the end of this episode, when he really should have gotten out of the car, Uh, he's like, no, I'm I'm in this with you. Like, True. I have a problem with that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Add that in and think about that with this scene. And you're right. It is more messed up. Yeah. I mean, Mm. it's sad, but yeah. It is. But I like listening to their little podcast. (laughs) Their 1989 (laughs) podcast. It's adorable. (laughs) It is cute. (laughs) Walt approaches Locke as he's rubbing some kind of medicine on his leg. He says that he had an accident. Walt tells him that he didn't poison his dad. He thinks Locke might suspect him because he knows that he burned the first raft. Locke assures him that they're friends, and that he knows Walt wouldn't do anything to hurt his dad. When Locke touches Walt's arm, he pulls away. Looking really freaked out, he tells Locke not to open that thing. Just don't open it, he yells, before running away. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I don't know what to make of this. I (laughs) don't even know. (laughs) It is the return of Psychic Walt. Right, and we hadn't seen him in a while. We haven't mentioned his special abilities Nope. In he a just while. kind of periodically drops in every now and then. Yeah. And like, Wait, what? <laughs> and I feel like the instances we had before, I could kind of write off in my mind as being coincidental. Like when he was reading the comment about the polar bear and the polar bear showed up. It's like, well, there's, we know there's polar bears on this island. That didn't have to be Walt. But, I mean, there's no reason why Walt should know anything about this hatch just from looking at Locke. So... This is weird. Yeah. It's like (laughs) we have these two special people and with their powers combined, (laughs) Walt can see the future. It's so weird. I don't know what else to say, but yeah, it's weird. (laughs) It's just so random and it's so frustrating because I just want a clear picture of Walt. Like, I just want to know definitively what his deal is. Yeah. And I mean, I guess this... You could say this is kind of definitive proof that he is psychic or mm-hmm. I don't know what the right word is for it. I mean, in this moment, he feels kind of psychic. Right. He clearly, like when he touched Locke, he learned something by doing that or channeled into something. I don't know. <laughs> I guess this is proof that all those ambiguous things were definitely mystical. Yeah. It kind of is. And just makes me think even more, do not open that hatch, please. Don't <laughs> do it. <laughs> yeah, if anything should give Locke pause, I think this might be the moment. Right. Because they have, Walt and Locke have this special connection. They've had it this whole time, so... Right, and Locke knows that Walt shouldn't know about the hatch, so... Yeah, and they're both... For him to say this, maybe the island is telling Locke through Walt. Right, and they're both so into the island. Like, Locke didn't, doesn't want to leave. Walt didn't want to leave when he burned down the first raft. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's like their their specialness connects them to the island in a way. Yeah. Because it's a special place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Locke is definitely choosing the signs that he is paying attention to. And he wants into that hatch and he 
keeps saying that the island wants him to do this, but here's a good sign that maybe it doesn't. Yeah, here's sign number 10 of 100 that you should not open that ad. Yeah. Oh, luck. <laughs> On the beach, Sawyer tosses Michael some Pepto-Bismol for his stomach cramps. Michael, however, is not having any of it and informs Sawyer that he's off the raft and that he's been replaced. He says that Sawyer's been stealing off of dead bodies and using his stash to get whatever he wants, which is not cool. Which is also what I've been saying this whole time, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we get it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sawyer spots Kate nearby and says he didn't know how badly she wanted on the raft. He grabs her again and drags her over to Michael. A crowd of people are watching now. Sawyer dumps out the contents of her backpack and pulls out Joanna's passport. She was the woman who drowned earlier this season. He accuses Kate of trying to run off with a new identity and poisoning Michael, but she tells him to shut up. Sawyer says that Kate only cares about herself, and we cut to a flashback. At the hospital, Tom wheels Diane into a room. He gets Kate and says he'll wait for her in his office before he leaves. Kate approaches Diane, and we find out she's Kate's mother. Kate starts crying and says she's sorry for everything she's put her through. It's heartbreaking, and even more so when Kate's mom starts calling for help. Kate tries to run away and ends up knocking out a security guard. She tells Tom she needs his car keys, and the two run to his car. Kate starts racing away, but a police car blocks them before they can get very far. Kate tells Tom to get out, but he says no and begs her to cooperate with the, with the police. She slams the car forward as the police officer starts shooting. They make it out, but then Kate crashes into another car. When she looks over at Tom, she's horrified to find out that he was hit by one of the bullets and killed. However, the police are still after her, and Kate doesn't stick around long before she runs away. These hospital cops are very on top of things, yeah. are they not? Yeah, the guy responded like, in like two minutes. <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel like their talents are being wasted here. Yeah. They should be in the CIA or something. Good God. Very true. <laughs> like as soon as that guy spots her in the hallway, there's a guy on the street like ready to take her down. Yeah. Like, it's just, they paint this picture like she is the world's most wanted criminal and I just don't feel like she is and it's kind of frustrating because it feels unrealistic to me it does like they're treating her like she's a she's murdered multiple people which we don't really have any evidence of up until this point i know like we still don't know her crime so it's a little hard to talk about this but like i personally do know her crime in the future (laughs) because i've seen this (laughs) (laughs) and this is not warranted. <laughs> I agree. It's really not. So it's just like when you back Phil and watch this episode, knowing what she did, it just all seems a little ridiculous to me. Yeah. My only thought would be that, I mean, they must have been waiting for her to show up and see her mom. Like maybe that's why they were able to respond so quickly. They were waiting for this to happen. Maybe one guy, <laughs> maybe the one guy by her bed, but. I'm sorry, the police have better things to do than sit around and wait for, like, this girl to show up. It's just... Maybe not. This is in, like, what, Iowa? Maybe they don't have anything better to do. (laughs) They should. Like, this is just (laughs) absurd. (laughs) Yeah. But anyway, this is not the point. No, it's not. (laughs) The reveal with her mom is really interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, we don't realize that it's her mom because the whole episode she's been saying Diane and right. Tom has been saying Diane. Right. Like, there's been a clear distancing of her. And I feel like that's really significant. It's, it's significant whenever Kate uses her real name with people. Like, names are important for Kate. Mm, definitely. So for her to just refer to her mom as Diane, it's just really... Crazy, because as much as she may be distancing her, she's here. You know, she's here to see what she can do for her or to say goodbye or whatever she needs to do. Right. And yeah, when she starts crying and apologizing, it's, I mean, it's obviously, it's obvious that Kate doesn't like hate her mom. So yeah, like she's, she wouldn't be here risking herself if she didn't care. Right. 
But maybe the use of her mom's name is like a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just awful. And I don't know why Tom would not get out of the car when Kate told him to get out of the car. Like... I know. You are married with a child. Yes, a young child. Like, think about these things. What are you thinking you're going to do? Are you planning to just Thelma and Louise it with Kate and ride off into the sunset? Right. (sighs) It's crazy. It's crazy and it's disappointing, honestly. It's disappointing that Tom would just abandon his family so easily. Yeah. Because that's what it sounds like. It does. It seems like very a very immature move. Yeah, I guess I buy it, you know, based on the kiss that they had earlier. Those two scenes really play together. And, like, either one by itself I think I could have handled, Mm -hmm. but together it just makes me really annoyed with Tom. Yeah, me too. And it's, I feel like it would also be more believable if they'd been hanging out for a few days or weeks, but I mean... It's been, what, six hours? <laughs> like, calm <laughs> yeah. down. Clearly, you know, based on what she told Jack, she clearly takes full responsibility for this. But as usual, I don't think she's completely at fault here. This, she wanted him to get out of the car. She t- obviously did not plan to get in a car accident. It's just not so simple. Yeah. And then it's like, it's also not great that she runs away immediately after finding out that he's been killed. Not that she could have done anything about that, but... <laughs> but flashbacks to last episode? Yeah, <laughs> kind of. It's just kind of... It's all awful. <laughs> if she didn't run away, it would have all been for nothing. You know? Yeah. But, like, was it worth it? Just to be able to talk with her mom for a few minutes who clearly, you know... Certainly not worth it in hindsight, no, I would hope. I don't think so. <laughs> oh, poor Kate. She doesn't deserve any of this. <laughs> no. Such a struggle. Back on the tent scene at the beach, Kate admits to everyone that she was on the plane with the marshal. She says that whatever her story is about what she supposedly did, she's going to jail. But she didn't poison Michael. Michael hands the passport back to Sawyer, and everyone walks away, leaving Kate alone. So this is... The big scene. This is what I'm assuming is the climax of this episode. Yeah, I mean, it's the big reveal of Kate's secret, and she's been keeping this secret all season. Yeah. And, you know, it it was going to come out eventually. And Sawyer's, he feels betrayed here. And, I mean, he was. He was betrayed. I feel like he is responding to a perceived injustice and... I support him. Of course you do. I'm sure you don't. (laughs) I feel like the fact, because when I watched the scene, I didn't remember that Kate, it was actually Kate's idea to poison Jin in the first, like, I didn't remember that. So, yeah, when I watched this, I don't think it was right for Sori to do this. Really? Like, yeah, I don't think it was his secret to tell in front of everyone like this. I feel like he Mm could have had a private conversation with Michael and then just maybe just told him that way and then tried to get his spot back on, back on the raft like that. And I mean, also he doesn't really have any proof that Kate poisoned Michael. I don't know. I just, and again, like he grabs her and drags her over in front of everyone. I just, I don't like it. Of course she's going to bail right now. Like (laughs) at this point I'm okay with it. Like, in general, I agree with you, but she's, you know, he's right. He's right that she's manipulating everybody. And, like, I just, I don't blame him for being mad right now. Like, it seems like everyone is attacking him all of a sudden, and he didn't do anything to anyone. (laughs) And Kate is the ringleader, and she's letting it all happen because she could benefit from it. So, I understand him being feeling betrayed and she did tell him like that she would do anything to get that spot and all he's doing is believing what she said i just wish i mean i can understand that i just wish she had had a private 
conversation with Michael. But it didn't have to be in front of everyone. Well, he kicked Sawyer off the raft in front of everyone. So he's just responding to the situation as I mean, it happens. that wasn't really... I mean, Michael was just lying by himself and he told Sawyer he was off the raft. And then I feel like once Sawyer started yelling and dragging Kate over, that's when everyone kind of gathered around. I mean, it's just... Like, we're not going to pull him into the jungle and have, like, a private scene between the two of them. It's just going to happen, you know? Right, with Sawyer. But I feel like with another character, maybe, <laughs> it could have just been a private thing. The result would have been the same, but it just wouldn't have felt so degrading. And, I mean, Kate is being really manipulative, and she is lying, but... If you just pull him to the side and have a private conversation, then Kate has the opportunity to manipulate other people in the same way. And his whole problem is that Kate is using everyone. Yeah, but it's like Sawyer's not the only one who knows about what she is, who she is, so... But he doesn't know that. I feel like he should know that. He, do he doesn't because nobody told him. He figured it out. I mean, he figured it out because of the whole thing with the Halliburton case, but seeming... Like, he knows how much Jack was involved in that, so... I would think he Sawyer would at least suspect that Jack knows, you know what Kate is. It's not like Maybe. Jack is going to lie to everyone about that. Like, would Kate ever... If Sawyer lied and manipulated... Like, if the situations were reversed, would Kate gather everyone around and tell them about the letter that Sawyer keeps? And, like, what happened to his parents? I mean, that's totally different, but I just don't think she would ever do something like that. I think she is right now. When she's letting Sawyer take the fall for poisoning Michael when she knows he didn't do it. Yeah. Maybe. And that's why he's angry. I pulled Instagram to see how people felt. And I wanted to know if they thought Sawyer was justified. And this was the first, like, clear definitive poll. Mm -hmm. And people totally think Sawyer was in the right. It was, like, 64% said yes. He was right to do it. Okay, so it's not like everyone, but a majority. No, it's not like 100%, but we finally have like a sort of lopsided poll. <laughs> I feel like it's always 50-50. Yeah. I don't know what else to say about it. You're not on board. Yeah, I'm not on board, but... You don't have to be on board. It's okay. No. It's, <laughs> it's tricky. It's just, I understand why Sawyer is mad, and I understand why he would want to get back at Kate. And I would even say he has a right to do that. I just don't like the way he goes about it. I would have been interested mm -hmm. to see what Jack would have done if he had been there. Well, I mean, he had no problem pulling lockdown in public last week. That's completely different. So you think Jack would have just... <laughs> I mean, that's a whole... It's a totally different person. I just think he could have reacted in a very similar way because lack... Or... Pff, <laughs> lack... <laughs> Jack is also really passionate and emotional in the moment, and he does stuff like this, too. Uh, yeah, that's true, but it's Kate. I mean, I don't know how he would have reacted. Like, I honestly don't. But I don't think it would have been the same as with Locke. I don't know. It would just, it would Probably have been interesting not. to see what would have happened. Definitely. Coming back, Sun is watching Jin as work on the raft continues. Jack approaches her and comments that Jin looks determined. He tells Sun he knows that she poisoned the water, hoping Jin and not Michael would drink it. Sun says she never wanted to hurt Jin and that she doesn't want him to die on the raft. She asks Jack if he'll tell everyone else, but Jack doesn't think they need to know. He tells Sun that she needs to say goodbye to Jin before he walks away. This is kind of funny because he's like, I know exactly what happened but he doesn't really <laughs> yeah he knows like most of it but not the whole thing <laughs> yeah sun plays it off really well though like i buy it until i see that next scene i like it like the fact that jack doesn't need to think jack doesn't think everyone else needs to know about this if it was Locke, he definitely would have <laughs> well yeah of course but that's luck so <laughs> I wish we had some sort of explanation on how Sun knows so much about, like, herbal remedies and apparently poison. Like, 
we get zero explanation for that. And I feel like it's just chalked up to, well, she's Asian, so she knows about plants <laughs> and Eastern medicine. And it's just kind of ridiculous. Like, tell us that Sun was a nurse or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, I guess. I always just figured that this was a hobby she just kind of took up when Jin was off, you know, beating people up for her father. Because, I mean, they never, like, in the flashbacks we got with Sun, I guess we haven't gotten that many, really, but it doesn't ever seem like she had a, a job to go to every day. So mm-hmm. I just assumed that she had a lot of time in her hands and maybe took a class in plants and herbs or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it would just be kind of nice to know, like, what if she was just, like, what if she was a chef and that's how she knows a lot about plants or, you know. Just give me a little something. That's all I want. Yeah, definitely. That night, Kate is tending to a fire when Sawyer approaches. He tells her he's back on the raft and that they set sail tomorrow. Kate asks Sawyer if he's here to apologize, and Sawyer says that's not his style. He tells Kate she cornered him and that he did what he had to do. Kate asks Sawyer a great question. Why is it so important for him to be on the raft? And he replies that there isn't anything on the island worth staying for. Kate tells him to be safe before he walks away. So yeah, I'm, I wonder why does Sawyer want to be on that raft so badly? Yeah, I don't know. Like to me, when he says there isn't anything here worth staying for, it's such a non-answer, such a cheesy like, oh God. But like, there isn't, like, what is he looking forward to going back home? I, I don't really get it. Yeah, I'm not sure. I would love to know yeah. why he really doesn't. Because you're right, it's it's a non-answer. And, you know, he's saying it because, like, right now he's saying it because he's hurt that Kate has betrayed him and he's letting her know that there's not really anything between them anymore. You know, supposedly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, like, I like it in the moment because the subtext is great. But why does he want to go? Yeah. It would be nice to to know that or have some inkling of that. Like, he doesn't need to tell Kate, but I would like to know. It doesn't make sense to me. Like, I'm assuming that whatever the reason is, that's what's driving him this whole episode to do whatever he needs to do to make sure he's on that raft. But why? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, I don't get it at all. I don't know. And I also don't get Kate's reason to be on the raft either. Like... I don't feel like he has a very good plan here. I feel like it's she thinks it's her best option for avoiding jail. So I kind of understand it. I feel like if we're so certain that the raft is going to work, but we're not so certain that you can find the island, maybe her best option is to stay on the island. Yeah, I mean, I don't feel like everyone else is thinking like Michael, that if the raft does get rescued, that the island is just unplottable. And that's yeah. never going to be found. <laughs> I mean, not at this point in the show anyway, but... Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like this moment. I mean, I like any scene with the two of them. They're just... They're both great actors, and they have such great chemistry. I don't want to say chemistry, because I feel like we say that a lot. But <laughs> mm-hmm. they just interact really well, and I... I like that Kate doesn't really hold this against him. Yeah, I don't understand that at all. It drives me a little crazy. Like, it seems so out of character for her to just be like, "It's we're fine now, you know, be safe on the raft tomorrow. Like, I feel <laughs> like she should be a lot angrier. But when have we ever had an angry Kate? I don't think it's out of character I feel like at she's all. gotten pretty close in this episode. And the way Sawyer grabbed her, and the way she told him to shut up when they were, you know, on the beach. Like, I feel like maybe she hasn't been full on angry, but she, to me, it feels like she's gotten closer in this episode than she ever has. And now it's just like completely blank. We're fine. It does, it makes no sense to me. I don't get the two of them at all. <laughs> I think she, really thinks that she would have done the same thing in his situation. And so how can she hold that against him? Like It's not like she was doing something, you know, totally honest and noble and he ruined the situation for her. Like she was caught manipulating people and trying to lie and forge an identity. Like she wasn't doing the right thing. 
and he caught her because she was trying to take something from him. So how can she be that mad? Yeah, I suppose. I guess that's my struggle with the two of them, because they are so alike, but I don't want them to be so alike, because I've always felt like Kate's intentions are a thousand times better than Sawyer's are, at least in this first season. But I mean, Mm -hmm. with these motivations, I kind of can't argue for that, but I still want to, you know what I mean? I think Kate is just loyal to herself, and that's it. Yeah. And so she understands someone who feels the same way. Yeah. It's just, they're so similar, but they're also so different. I mean, the way Kate is with Sun and Claire, like she has all these scenes being unselfish and helping people. Yeah. She, just like Sawyer, she's been hurt in the past. And so she's very protective and... You know, he kind of protects himself with sarcasm and she protects herself by making friends. And it's just like two different strategies, but they're kind of doing the same thing. I guess. (laughs) (laughs) That's just my opinion. No, it's it's fine. I just I don't like them. I don't like talking about this. We'll get used to it, Randy. They're not going anywhere. (laughs) Can we just like skip the first half of season three in our podcast? Can we just that be a negative? (laughs) (laughs) We're gonna actually. I forgot to tell you. We're gonna make that part of the podcast visual. I will quit. I will leave. Oh my god! No one wants to see that. Anyway, (laughs) Walt finds Michael and asks him if he's getting better. With no hesitation, he tells Michael that he burnt the first raft because he didn't want to leave. He says that he's really sorry. Amazingly, Michael does not freak out about this, saying that it's okay and that they don't have to go. The two of them can stay on the island together. But Walt says that they absolutely have to leave. Yeah, it's so, it's so chilling. Watching this scene. It is. It is very creeptastic. (laughs) And I love that Michael is so understanding and he just says, okay, we'll stay here if that's what you really want. Yeah, I feel like this is a lot of character growth for him. I'm shocked. Yeah, it's great. It's almost inconsistent, but I'll go with it. Yeah. Yeah, Walt just seems so sure about whatever he saw. It's, oh, it's creepy. I would love to know what he saw. I would have loved for Saeed to have overheard this conversation and for him to come back to luck and be like, no, there's no way we're opening this hatch now. It's not (laughs) happening. That would have been great. Yeah. In the last scene, Sun finds Kate in her tent. Sun says that Jack knows she's the one who poisoned Michael and that she didn't tell him it was Kate's idea. She says Kate shouldn't be punished when she was only trying to help Sun, and I guess she just missed the showdown between Kate and Sawyer on the beach earlier. She seems to have no knowledge of that whatsoever. (laughs) Sun says Jack won't tell the others, and Kate responds that Jack is good at keeping secrets. Sun tells Kate that when she was little, she thought that when she found the man she loved, she would be happy forever. Kate says she thought the same, and the episode ends. The big final twist. Yep. It's a good twist. Yeah, because at first you're thinking, man, Kate got really screwed. And then you're like, whoa, yeah. she didn't. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, when I was asking for feedback on this episode, people were saying that this is one of the reasons that they don't like Kate very much. Because she is manipulative and they just don't like the actions from this episode. Yeah. Which I can understand. I can too. I don't like it either. Earlier, when before I remember this twist, I was totally on Kate's side, you know, against Sawyer, blah, blah, blah. But after this, it's like there's no right or wrong answer here because convincing someone to poison someone else is kind of messed up. So <laughs> now I don't know what right. to think. Yeah. She conned son. 
Yep, she did. I don't know how Sun didn't hear about the whole situation on the beach. It seems like that would be like hot island gossip. The fact that Kate's <laughs> a criminal and that she wanted Sawyer's place in the raft but didn't get it. But whatever, it's fine, I guess. Yeah. Maybe it just hasn't gotten back to her yet. Sure, sure. <laughs> She's busy in her garden. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, brewing up her next concoction. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like this ending. I feel like it's very... It's sad. Because Kate's obviously thinking about Tom. You've got Sun talking about Jen. Yes. And she's so desperate to keep Jen and not lose him that she would poison him to keep him here. Yeah. It's just crazy. It is. Why won't anyone on this island not have a conversation with someone else? Like, yeah. all these problems could be solved, potentially, if people actually sat down and talked with each other. But That's the number one flaw on this show, I think. Yeah, and I feel like it's a flaw in a lot of shows. Yeah, it is. It doesn't have to be, but it definitely is. Yeah. But I like, I like this final scene because... You know, it kind of feels like we already got our big reveal. Mm -hmm. And I love the just extra layer of, but wait, there's more. Yeah, I, I feel like Lost does this a lot. It was like, like you said, a big reveal or twist. And then there's another one that I never see coming. So yeah, it's like they do the obvious one and then the less obvious one. Yeah, I feel like it usually involves Sawyer too. So. <laughs> Well, sure, you know. <laughs> Most great things do involve her. I mean... I agree, Randy. Okay, that's not <laughs> what I said at all. <laughs> so what were you thinking, like, thematically? So I couldn't really come up with a good theme this week. I don't know how we're going to do this or how I'm going to do this for another five seasons, but... <laughs> but all I came up with was something along the lines of... Like, is running away from your problems always the best idea? Mm. Because. Yes, it is. <laughs> End of story. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> because, you know, in Kate's flashbacks, she tries to run away. You know, she tries to run, a run away at the end of the um, of her flashbacks and Tom ends up dead. And it sounds like she's been trying to run away her whole life and she's a fugitive. So. I don't know. Like, again, it's hard to talk about this when we don't know exactly how it all started for her and why she always mm -hmm. wanted to run away as a kid. Yeah. So I feel like you could argue both ways with that. And then, you know, Jin is also trying to run away from Sun. So that's what I wrote. I don't know if that makes any sense. but Yeah. No, that's true. And I feel like it's... It's kind of tied to what I said, sort of. I feel like mine was just so broad that yours kind of like umbrellas under it. Okay. <laughs> I, I said, what is the price of loyalty? Okay. Because I feel like with Kate, our issue is always trust. She and Jack have been dealing with that, like as long as they've known each other. Mm -hmm. And we keep seeing over and over again, and especially in this episode, that Kate's loyalty tends to be to herself. And, like, the more we see of her background, the more we see wh why that might be. Yeah. But, like, I feel like a few episodes ago, well, actually, it's been a while now, but in her last episode, Jack, you know, he learned that she, he couldn't trust her. And he's been <laughs> constantly telling her how trustworthy she, untrustworthy she is ever since. And in this episode, I think Sawyer learned that he couldn't trust her. She's not loyal to him either. She's just loyal to herself and her interests. Uh, but it cost her so much. Like it's cost her any sort of relationship that she has been growing with either of these two guys. Um, yeah. and now it's like costing her the trust of everyone on the entire island. Right. It's like, you can see the faces of Shannon and Claire when they find out, you know, that she's the fugitive. It's. Yeah. I mean, at the end of that scene, everybody walks away and she's alone. Yeah. 
And she earned that. She earned her aloneness because she's been manipulating people and been completely deceptive. And I feel like this goes along with her story off the island, too. Because, like, her coming home, like, to see her mother is a sign of loyalty, like, to her mom. And Mm -hmm. it costs her so much, like, to do that. Like, it costs Tom's life. And I know she didn't know that, but, God, like, (laughs) it's so terrible. And it we just, like... I feel like it might cement in you that you just shouldn't be loyal to anyone but yourself when you see what happens when she tries to do something for her mom. Yeah, that's so true. It definitely does a lot to explain her mindset and kind of where she's coming from as a character. Right. Like, she just, she's gone through so much. I know. (laughs) Our poor baby Kate. I know. So, yeah, I don't necessarily like her actions but i like this episode for the fact that we get to explore that a little bit more yeah like we've seen that she's untrustworthy we've seen that she does bad stuff she's definitely a criminal we've seen plenty of crimes that she's committed Mm -hmm. but now we're kind of seeing what she's lost and i think that that adds a whole new layer to her and why she might be acting the way she is we also get a lot of references that I guess we didn't talk about very much to her rough childhood and like Tom completely understood why she needed to run away. Yeah, I feel like I don't want to I don't want to give anything away by talking about it. But yeah, we do get some nods to to what happened there. Yeah, we don't know what happened, but we know it wasn't good and that Tom doesn't really seem to hold it against her for leaving. Oh, I can't wait till we get to that episode. That'll be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I like Kate episodes. I know a lot of people don't, but I just think they're fun. Yeah, I do too. I find them interesting. And this is her third one, so I yeah. feel like they managed to do something a little bit different with this one. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's good to see this side of her. It's a, it's a whole new side, and you know there are a lot of sides to Kate, so yeah. it makes sense to spend a lot of time with her. Yeah, it does. All right, that's going to do it for us for this week. Don't forget, if you're enjoying all of our arguments about Jack and Sawyer, you can go to iTunes and leave us a review. We love seeing those, and it helps fellow Lost fans find the podcast. You can also follow us on Instagram at The Lost Podcast, or you can email us at frecklesandblondie at thelostpodcast.com. If you want to support the show, you can find us on Patreon, and pledge to give a dollar a month or whatever you can afford. Don't forget to tune in next week where we'll be talking about part one of the season finale, Exodus. Yay! I know. I can't believe we're already about to wrap up the season. I know. It's so, so crazy. And we're planning to discuss it exactly as it aired. So part one of the finale aired on May 18th and then... Parts 2 and 3 aired on May 25th. So we're going to just divide it up that way because that's how people watched it when it aired live. So we'll have two episodes devoted to the finale. Yep. Two very long episodes, I'm sure. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure they will be. And then after that, we're planning to have like a season one wrap up episode and I think it would be awesome if we got a lot of feedback from all our listeners on what their takes on season one have been so far. So yeah, if you guys could start like emailing us, giving us your thoughts. I mean, I don't know how to do it yet, but if you guys even wanted to send us sound recordings, it would be really awesome to share like some of your thoughts on the podcast. Oh, yeah. Like that would be really cool. <laughs> So just something to think about. We've got like a couple episodes before we get there, but yes, I think that episode's going to be really fun. Yeah, definitely. Tell us your favorite characters, least favorite characters, favorite episodes, whatever. Yeah. If you've like come to any different conclusions from this podcast, if you've thought of any characters in a new way, anything, we would love to hear from you and get your thoughts. 
And questions too. Like if you still have questions yeah. or you just don't agree with us on something, <laughs> please, like we would love to talk about that. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> and I know you guys aren't shy, so <laughs> I, I look forward to your feedback. Yeah. Alrighty. Until then, I'm Randy. I'm Tiffany. And this has been Freckles and Blondie. Oh my god. <laughs> did you just drop the microphone? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I feel like I just fell out of an airplane. Sorry.